Well, we'll have to deal with that. <laughs> but, well, here we go again. <laughs> Hi there. Welcome back, everybody. It is, once again, Wednesday evening, and that means it's here on YouTube Live for Cast Iron Wednesday. And if this is your first time visiting uh, this channel, well, thank you very much for showing up and welcome. Um, quite a, a number of these uh, smaller YouTube uh, foodie and cooking channels, uh, they've had something of a tradition going on for a few years at least, which they call, of course, Cast Iron Wednesday. Pretty simple means on Wednesday evenings we do a uh, cast iron video, or not necessarily Wednesday evenings. Uh, most of them do pre-recorded videos. A few of them do these uh, live videos, and my channel happens to be one of them, so thank you so much. Um, yes, and um, I'm real flattered that uh, people have shown up. Yeah, okay. Uh, it looks as though my video may be choppy. Uh, I guess I would like to ask, does the uh, video seem okay and does the audio seem okay? I'm hoping I don't have to do like a restart or anything like that. Um, but nonetheless, uh, here we are again on uh, YouTube Live. And hello, everybody. Hello, Turner Fowler and Cooking with Bobby Joe and Jacqueline Martin and uh, Neos, if I'm pronouncing that right. And uh, Lee, and hello again to William Hurt and Clico, and quite a few people have shown up. And and again, I'm very flattered that uh, people are taking the time to show up uh, so soon. Yeah, yeah. Hi, and Jamie says hi to everybody, like William Hurt, and Rhino fifty three, and Four Jim forty four, and uh, all that. So um, again, uh, hello. Uh, video and audio seem okay, and thank you. And I'm glad to hear that. So I guess <clears throat> that means we can uh, get started here on another Cast Iron Wednesday <laughs> where uh, we get to play with uh, Cast Iron, and that's always appreciated. Uh, it's the beginning of February, and yeah, we have uh, just under two weeks now until Valentine's Day, the big deal holiday for this month. And, uh, well, I am uh, looking forward to, forward to that, and I guess that's one reason why this uh, topic for this evening is bread pudding, uh, because that's a dish that, uh, well, I had been wanting to make, at least here on this live, and also it's uh, appropriate because it is a uh, sweet dessert. Um, and hello, Jose Latias. Uh, I'm hoping uh, you've been getting the uh, notifications that uh, your uh, package should be arriving by tomorrow, assuming the uh, UPS uh, UPS notifications are correct. Apparently it was delayed because of that big storm we had last Saturday, but it is on the way and you should be uh, receiving it. Hello, Terry Sinchef. I posted a picture. Oh, good. Yes. Glad to hear you received it. And I'm, I'm hoping it uh, arrived undamaged. That's always the fun part about uh, shipping uh, cast iron. So, <laughs> uh, yes, and I'm glad to I'm glad to hear you received that. So, and likewise, hello, uh, Candy De Silvio. Thank you. I'm glad again. Everything's doing good. But yeah, as I mentioned, uh, well, what we are looking at tonight will be bread pudding, and uh, this is uh, really something special because yeah, I have a couple of things to say about that. Apparently, it seems that uh, a number of people do not know what bread pudding is. Um, yes, I did see that a little notice here at the beginning of the uh, of the live, and really nothing nothing at all wrong with that. Uh, I myself had not heard of bread pudding for most of my life, and only just after I learned how to cook. That's when I learned about uh, bread pudding. And really, I was floored, largely because just the idea of bread pudding is, is so uh, so useful and so simple and so tasty, too. Because, you know, this is one of those uh, dishes that uh, everybody should make, largely because it's inexpensive and it's really great, especially if you're on a uh, low budget or your budgets are tight. And and. And as uh, she says, too, beginning bakers, too, as well. It's so easy to make. It's one of those almost non-fail dishes, although I, although I did have to adjust the recipe, as I found out. <laughs> um, yes, I mean, that's one reason why I encourage uh, folks to do that. It's for if you're on a low budget. I mean, consider this. Bread pudding, and I think I will, uh, I think I'll move the, this over here as we will uh, get started. Um, okay, and by the way, here, take a look uh, what I'll be uh, using tonight. I've got, among other things, I've got a um, BSR number 10 12-inch cast iron skillet, which has a nice wide surface. 
This is about the same area as a 9 by 13 baking pan, and so this should be enough to uh, make a decent-sized bread pudding. Also here, I've uh, pulled out, uh, once again, the uh, cast iron bunt pan, which is not actually a bunt pan, which I call the mon. Well, it is called the monarch. Uh, and yeah, this is a uh, cast iron uh, cake pan. And in this case, I'll be making a second, we'll be making a second bread pudding in this. So we've got that as a starter. Also here in the back, I've uh, melted some butter. Let's do this right. In a... Um, in a little heart-shaped uh, cast iron pan. This is one of those cheap uh, cast iron pans that you can usually find at this time of year, just before uh, Valentine's Day at places like Walmart or Big Lots. Usually they make, usually you uh, find it with cookie mix or brownie mix uh, because that's essentially what it is. However, um, it makes a uh, just fine uh, uh, cast iron baking pan in itself or anything else. Uh, I melted uh, about a quarter cup of butter in this pan, and that's what you're seeing here. And it's my, uh, really, is my camera thing uh, caught? My camera cord? Uh, let me move this a little bit. There we go. So that we'll have a better look. What the heck? Where it looks like I'm getting caught already. Well, that's a bit annoying. Uh, nonetheless, there we go. That's a little better. As I said, that's a um, you know, heart-shaped uh, pan, which I was lucky enough. I think I found this one at Savers or a thrift shop uh, for about a couple of bucks because, really, that's about uh, all it's worth. <laughs> so, um, hi, Mark Steeler. Where are you going? To Birmingham. I'm going to buy me a stove, a range, and a bunch of cast iron cookware to use on them. Well, good luck. I'm sure you can find it in, uh, in, uh, Birmingham. Although, as always, you'll have to go antiquing to look for it, unfortunately, because BSR has been out of business now for almost 30 years, regrettably, since the early 80s. And yes, uh, I pulled out some, uh, uh, some uh, cinnamon bread, uh, which actually was kind enough to be donating. And yeah, it has been sitting in my kitchen on, unopened for at least a week or so. So it's definitely going a little stale. And that's the thing. This is what I wanted to say. What I found out is bread pudding is one of those uh, dishes that they came up with really probably like during the Middle Ages, during the medieval era, when, as you know, uh, you did not throw food away. Food, throwing food away was a grievous sin, and that's I meant and meant to be taken literally. You recycled as much food as possible, and you used it as much as possible, which means that there were many recipes, especially considering how uh, bread goes bad fast, especially again, back in those days before they had refrigerators and other preservatives. So yes, uh, bread pudding really was designed especially to be used. Oh boy. In fact, this is tough enough. I think I got to get myself out a fork or something. Um, let me do that here. Bread pudding was really meant especially to be used on stale bread. So essentially if you have older bread in the kitchen, and, it's, it, and as long as it doesn't have actual mold on it, I mean, even if the bread has gone dry and is like a day or two old, there's absolutely nothing wrong with using it. In this case, it's actually, as I said, this has been sitting here for about a week or so, although in the package, it's uh, still relatively fresh. Um, one thing is that I've seen uh, on quite a few of these videos where everybody uh, starts out by cutting their bread into one-inch cubes, and I've found that that's really not necessary. Uh, I find it's a lot easier and a lot more fun to quite literally just tear the bread up into little pieces. Kind of like when, you know, when you make monkey bread, you do that with the dough. You roll it up into little balls. Um, and the main reason why is because, of course, you know, cutting it up into cubes, as they say, is because that way you have even cooking so that it will eat, you know, uh, it will uh, absorb the liquid and come into and uh, become even um, sized uh, pieces of uh, bread pudding. But uh, again, doing it this way, not only is it easier, probably faster, it also gives it something like a rustic look. And I've not had any problem at all with different size uh, sizes of this because it's all going to absorb the uh, liquid and it's going to steam in the oven as well. So as such, I have not had, again, I've not had any problem with uh, making my bread pudding in this manner here. 
What I just need to do is be sure I can fill up the space, but I don't think there will be a problem with that. As I said, this 12-inch uh, pan here has about the same uh, diameter or volume, rather, that is, as a uh, 12, you know, as a 9 by 13 inch baking pan. And as you can see, it looks like we're not going to have any problem filling this up here. There we go. Actually, I realized I did goof, of course. I was supposed to paint this with, uh, with butter first. <laughs> My bad. So let me quickly put this in. I'm sorry? Well, actually, I have melted butter. That's not a problem. It's only that I started putting it in the um, in the pan before I before I greased it. But that's not so bad. We'll just do this again. I always forget something, and now is uh, no exception. Um, as I said, just uh, simply that's why I melted this butter here, especially so that I could quickly just simply. Grease the pan, and then we will throw that bread back in. So it's really not a not any kind of a major problem here. And this is not taking long at all anyway. You can, of course, other than melted butter, you can pretty much use your usual uh, favorite uh, cooking uh, oil for uh, greasing the pan but of course butter gives it a nice taste especially since we're going to be baking this here and because it's a sweet bread anyway there we go we don't need a lot now we'll just toss this back in nice and easy there and finish up the last few pieces so Here's a start. This is this way again. Um, really, a nice sweet bread pudding. It actually one thing that is important is the type of bread that you use in it. I mean, I mean, regular plain bread is just fine for uh, making bread pudding with. And so, if you have again like a stale or day old loaf of bread, or one that you uh, acquired, you know, maybe in the uh, Half price uh, bakery section of your local supermarket. Hint: Don't get these things at Walmart. Walmart is cheap, and they don't even do half price. <laughs> yeah, you could. Yeah, you could even do chocolate chips. Okay, maybe. Yeah, maybe the next one. So, okay. Um, or even, uh, yeah, or even if um, some folks they uh, get, uh, you know. Uh, they get bread donations in some areas, like even if you're on, even if you uh, maybe sometimes uh, go to a food bank or the like. I mean, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, essentially, and you end up with a, uh, a loaf of bread. So here's a uh, good thing to use it for. So that's the first step. Dough recipe is different with the bread that you're using. Well, there is that too. <laughs> Uh, Lodge Sportsman Grill. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yes, I'm sure you saw as well that Lodge has just released a new model of the Sportsman Grill. They've apparently redesigned it and given it a slightly higher price, too. And they're selling it on their own website for like $180. So, boy, at that price, it had better be a darn good grill. I'm going to have to uh, take a closer look at that and see what the measurements of it are. So, uh, yeah, the Sportsman Grill is back, although it's a newer model. And I guess that means that the all that the standard Sportsman Grill is going to be something of a collector's item, at least for another year or more, depending on when, if ever, they decide to uh, re-release the original Sportsman Grill. Anyway, this is the first step of our bread pudding. Ugh. Next step is some liquid, which means we get to uh, come over here and use another thing that I enjoy using in my kitchen. In this case, it would be a nice uh, Pyrex bowl. We want bread. Sorry? We want bread. You want more bread in that? No, you do. We definitely do. So it's going to get loaded. It's going to get moist. You're going to oh. moisten it. Okay. It's going to go, it's gonna shrink right down to like this. All right. Yeah, you need bread to pile up over. Okay, then we'll, <laughs> I'll, uh, throw the, uh, I'll throw the other loaf in. Yep. Yeah. We might not be using the hardship one tonight. Well, we'll find out. Yeah. yeah, Jamie is actually suggesting I use more bread. So. Yeah, that's what I'm going to end up like next Okay. Yeah, because with a normal loaf of bread, yes, but this where it's a cinnamon swirl bread, it's so small. So it's 
So if it's calling for a loaf of bread, it's literally like a large loaf of bread, you know? Well, there is that. These are like half the size. Okay. All right. Um, where did I put that fork just now? Oh, can you? Yeah, if you could do this. That's one way to do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it looks like I'll do a little bit more of this per her instructions. Evidently, we really want to load up the bread or use a smaller pan. Depends which. Well, since I've started using this, I might as well continue using it. Good use for a 12-inch uh, cast iron skillet anyway. Yes, that's true. We can do the other one with uh, Valentine's Day close next week. But there we go. This actually is not, not doing too badly. But, yeah, this is, in fact, a uh, not, this is a uh, Century Series uh, BSR uh, skillet from the 1970s. I've shown this one before, and it does have markings that indicate it's actually specifically from the 70s. In the 1970s, BSNR did uh, actually slightly resize a number of their pans, and their and so there is a, a slightly different size marking on this pan. In fact, it says something like uh, seven, uh, 12 and 7 16th inches, which is an unusual size, yes, but that at least is definitely an indication that this is from the 1970s. There we go. I think this, I think we're doing better now. So having done that, uh, we might do the second one because if nothing else, we do have actually, among other things, tortilla bread here. You don't think so? <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see. I guess we'll find out. Okay. Anyway, now let's go here. Like a wasted opportunity for the market to generate community goodwill. Yeah. There are, yes. A lot of people. Yeah. Really suck to make them get it out of the waste bin. Okay. Um, throwing, waiting for us to throw it out. Okay. Hold on. What's going on here? Oh, yeah. That's right. I see. I worked at a supermarket and we used to throw away so much bread. People would be waiting for us to throw it out. Well, that is a really sore subject and it's not entirely really a case of the evil supermarket being cheap to the uh, being cheap to uh, the people. Yeah. It's a whole bunch of other things concerned too because I know of let's just say, I'm only saying this to be devil's advocate. I'm hoping I don't offend people by saying this. I know of instances where uh, rest, some restaurants actually did give away their leftover food at the end of the night. Oh, by the way, i got to start cracking eggs as I'm doing this. Uh, they did start giving their food, uh, leftover food at the end of the night. And here's what happened, unfortunately. Uh, as word got out that they were giving away free food every night, more and more people started showing up. And they were quite literally getting crowds of people looking for uh, free food even to the point where uh, apparently it was even starting to uh, affect their sales, unfortunately. And so because of that, they actually had to stop doing it for that reason. Also, another reason, yeah. when, when people, they feel like, why didn't Dunkin' Donuts just donate all their food, donate the donuts to the food pantries and stuff? Yes. Well, there's insurance reasons. There are uh, insurance reasons, because, you're saying? Yeah, no, it is. That's why, because um, the, the nice work for a corporate restaurant, you know, it's uh, red tape. But um, if somebody were to get sick, yeah. They can go back and go after the donuts. Well, there is that. Yeah, okay. So that's one that's the main reason why they don't, you know. Yeah, there are there are there are reasons. Oh, this one's cracked. Okay, Especially because I mean good. you're talking about it's going to a food pantry and sometimes it takes a couple more days after they get donations for it to even go out to the food pantry. Oops. So and someone would be like, Oh, I got sick and then go after Dunkin' Donuts and you know yeah, and because they can't tell whether they bought it from a store or whether they bought it from you know, so it's mm -hmm. It's for insurance reasons and people getting sick. It's just they, they cover it themselves. You can't blame them, you know? Like, yeah. Oh, we have, a, we have a light issue. Like it or not, yes, that light has been uh, flickering on and off, I'm it's afraid. Been on. Wait a minute. That light's been out for ages. Yeah, I know. It's been flickering on and off all night. So, but uh, yeah, the short answer is that regrettably, it's not just a black and white issue. It's not just good and bad. It's not just innocent people versus evil corporation. There are instances where unfortunately the line is more gray and blurred I'm, I'm, and i'm not exact i'm not really going to uh try to settle that kind of an argument uh here either when they go, when they go 
food somehow. You can't go to a grocery store when they donate the food to the places. Okay. Um, so I don't know how it ends up working out, but like restaurants and stuff like that, like private restaurants. Right. Uh, they, they, it's because it's because the insurance is getting sick. And a lot of times places that they donate stuff, they might go out the next day and sell it too. That's another reason why they yeah. do it too. Yeah, it, 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 it can get really messy, unfortunately. So, regrettably. So, yeah. Anyway, I've got uh, six eggs here, and now we get to sweeten it up by adding one cup of sugar. And this is a half cup here, so I have to do two of these. Oh, I, know, I do three. I do three half cups. You do three? You do yeah, a I cup and a half? It's a big space. Okay. So, there are six eggs, and you want a cup and a half. All right. Okay, you've made bread pudding a number of times before. I won't disagree. Okay, I'll say it this way then, especially since this is this recipe comes from like the medieval era. It's not an exact science here. It's not like it's going to be spoiled because I've added a cup and a half of uh, sugar instead of a uh, cup of sugar. So uh, it's really... Yeah, that's true, too. So it's really, uh, this is a pr very versatile recipe. So especially as well, if you don't have enough of the ingredients and you're able to fudge it a little bit, there's also nothing wrong with that. Essentially, I'm just creaming all this together into a thick paste. And with this, we'll also be adding uh, two cups of milk. So, okay. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> cute. Yeah, she says that since we're using cinnamon roll bread, if we if we wanted to, we could actually call this French toast casserole. And yeah, you've got a you actually do have a point there. That didn't take very long to mix either. That wasn't difficult at all. So now from here, let's go. Um. Let me quickly grab the milk. Thank you again for your patience here, everyone. Okay. To this, we are going to mix in, uh, again, uh, I me have to move this out of the way for the moment. Ugh. Two cups of milk. And this will help use up my milk, too, which is good, because it's actually getting close to its time, but I did check it before tonight. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, to be honest, I'm not sure they can hear you from over there. I'm sorry to say, but yeah, but Jamie is saying it, the recipe is so versatile, you could make it savory as well as sweet. You could make this with cheese and bacon. Um, and even with chicken broth, for instance, instead of milk. And in fact, that is how you get turkey stuffing. What turkey stuffing is at Thanksgiving is, in fact, a bread pudding. You're making a savory bread pudding. And uh, that's really the basis of your stuffing. So anyway, that's we're almost done here. It's already just about done. So thank you for your Thank you for your patience with this. That also shows you how easy this is to put together when not using a million ingredients in this one. Uh, oh no, I'm sure I'm sure we'll manage. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah well, that's why, like, I'm joking because it's such an easy recipe. Yes. You know? to uh, the, some people might find using brown sugar makes it taste a little bit different yeah. too. This to is this, really just a little bit of uh, just a tiny bit of salt, little bit of uh, vanilla extract. And that's about it. Although at this point, in fact, if you wanted to, you could even add things like raisins. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. You don't. Raisins, <laughs> okay, you don't like well, raisins. I know that. So yeah, exactly. You, but I mean, you could add raisins to this, or at this point, even if you want to add chocolate chips, right about now would be the uh, time to do so. But. It, okay. okay, but really, here we are uh, just about ready to put it in the oven already. So, this, this recipe is really good too because you can make it um like if you want it to be more of a custard custardy like a, a consistency you yes. add more egg and less milk. That's true. So you can well, uh, so instead of doing what did you do six eggs? Yes. Six eggs seems to be six eggs is like the standard, you know. Pretty um, much. But or you can add um instead of so instead of doing the sugar, 
um, you just do sweetened condensed milk. Right. You think that we hear a lot of Right. Um, sweetened condensed milk. Um, but um, where'd you go with that? Wasn't that the other thing we were going to do? Like a tres leche? Okay. See how it works afterwards. But really, for beginners, if, if, or like a big one, like a young child, learning, yeah. you know, if anyone who's learning, just learning how to do this, this works really well because it's not built on like a science. They can hear me here. Oh, yeah. It's not built on a science like most baking is. This mm -hmm. is really, you really, the only way you mess it up is like doing half the amount of eggs and twice the amount of milk. Yeah. I really, and that might even not mess it up either. Yeah. Okay, the time out for a moment because now comes the important part. We get to pour it. And here's where we simply try to spread it out and try to cover as much of this bread as we can. So let's go a little bit here, a little bit there. Don't want to spill it. It's probably inevitable that some of it's going to spill. So one other thing I did learn, and I learned this one the hard way, is that there actually is one important measurement. And uh, this trick I learned came, in fact, from another uh, YouTube channel that I follow. This guy who calls himself Omnivorous Adam. He is also a very up-and-coming uh, YouTube star, and I do recommend checking his channel out. He, When he did his uh, Thanksgiving stuffing, he pointed out there is actually a rule to follow for the amount of liquid, in this case, milk, that uh, you add to this. And it's simply... Equal amounts of liquid to bread. I'm using 16 ounces of bread here, actually a little bit more. So, so for that reason, maybe I should throw in a little bit more milk, in fact. Um, well, well, yes, that, that was the whole point, and that makes that gives it more of more of a pudding type con consistency. You're talking about stuffing. This is, you need more milk. You need there we more go. Milk. It's going to end up with dry. Okay. I, I, you, I, I use two cups okay. of milk. I'm telling you. Can I see? I'll show you. The, this is how you tell. Can I see okay. a utensil of some sort? Okay. That's not how I Okay. All right. Um, here. Can I do you want to take Got it. All right. All right. Um, I'm going to spoon or something. Like one of the... All right, here's a big spoon. Here's a big spoon. All right. Okay. What are we doing? All right. So you just want to check, you know, like this is, you see, this is not going to be, this is all going to be dry. If you're making stuffing, yes, this is a stuffing. This okay. is, you're going to have liquid to absorb all of this. See, you know, none of this is going to be, it's going to be dry. You you think it's going to be too dry? Absolutely. 100%. Okay. I promise you. I promise you need way more liquid. All right. Way more liquid. Well, I've used yeah. two cups. Maybe I should or, have used three cups. Yeah. Like, um, Keep stirring it. You gotta stir it really well too. <clears throat> Sorry guys, I'm exhausted. I sound so tired. Um, I had a bit of a sleepwalking episode last night. So when you sleepwalk, you don't really end up getting sleep like you should. It's not hot yet, right? Uh, no, that's okay. Should, all right. no, that's not hot. All right. So um, anyways, yeah. So I had some trouble. So when you sleepwalk, you don't really get full sleep because you're well, you're sleeping, but you're not sleeping. It was a uh, quite the interesting thing to wake up to. <laughs> yep. I heat me a paper towel roll in half. Look at that. Good thing we went fishing. Oh, dear. Sorry about that. It's all right. Hey, wait, wait. It's called the prize. Yeah. Uh, in my family, right. it, my family cooks, and um, so my you, sister has really long hair. So, so one it, second. So you still say it needs more liquid? Um, Maybe not now. No, but you can restore it really, really well. Okay. Um, I'm trying not to mush it up too much, so there's bread pieces on the top. Um, I sound exhausted. I am exhausted. I don't sound exhausted. I am exhausted. I don't usually talk as much either. Mm -hmm. But um, like I was saying, so in family dinners, but some my sister usually tends to lose like one hair, <laughs> and whoever gets it, it's called the prize. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's gonna be like oh oh, and you can tell by the way that they sound instantly what it is. So oh. Oh, our new place. Oh my goodness. Oh, we get guess what we did. Who gets to do this when they move to a new apartment? We get to. A drum roll, please. Eric, you want to see the honors what we get to do with the kitchen? All we right. get to design the kitchen. Yeah, from, from scratch. It's oh, completely demoed. There you go. Now I'm just going to fork it. I certainly hope so. I'm going to fork it up a little bit. Okay. So let's fork this up just so you can some brown bits on the yeah. top. Yeah. How's now, that looking, guys? What do you think? Comments. Yeah. Now, now, this Comments is a, looking. This is a family channel here. Yeah. We're not going to, we're not fork, we're not going to. No, go down sorry. that road. We're just we're, gonna spoon instead. Yeah, exactly. We're not forking it. We're no, spooning we're it. Spoon <laughs> it. We're just gonna spoon instead. All right. 
Okay. And now at this point, really, it's all ready to go into the oven. It's pretty much. Uh, it's pretty much as simple as that. I'll check some comments in just a second, but we've got to put this back a little bit, and then it goes into the oven. Then we'll be able to uh, spend a little time on the comments. Do this carefully. Ugh. Oh boy. Ugh. Doing it. Got it. You have bad wrist. Why would no, you not have not, I don't have a bad wrist anymore. Well, it's not bad. It's okay. Not. There we go. You need to treat it like it is. It's so anyway. Still, still new. Okay, so we're going to be uh, baking that, by the way, for uh, oh, uh, in a 350 degree. Oh, okay. Here, here, I got you. I got you. Okay, no, we're good. In a 350 degree oven for uh, about 30 minutes, oh, maybe sorry. maybe oh. less. So, as um, I got it. That's all right. You will. All right, whatever. Okay. <laughs> That's not a good angle for you. It's my opinion. I think, anyway. That's all right. Okay. Okay. Anyway, uh, yeah. So it did when it went into a 350 degree oven, and we'll be baking it for a little less than uh, 30 minutes or so. Of course, you know what they say: if it smells done, it's done. But anyway, thank you for uh, your patience putting up with that. And that's and we're not we're hardly done yet, by the way, for the record. So uh, okay, what do we have here? Uh, okay, good. Um, let me see. Going back up here, and thank you again. Jose Latias, I used to work at a, at a supermarket. Well, like I, yeah, as we explained, unfortunately, there are situations, and I'm not saying that you that you're wrong, uh, but it, as I said, it's not really a black and white situation, unfortunately. So, and yeah, there are a lot of people hurting out there. So, it seems like a wasted opportunity for the market to generate community goodwill. Yeah, there is there is that. So, hmm. uh, is it dangerous to cook with a rusty cast iron pan? Well, not really dangerous. But, you know, it will discolor the food and uh, put a strange taste, a metallic taste into the food. So those are the main reasons why, you know, rust is not recommended. Not to mention that long-term rust can actually damage the pan, too. So, um, so no, a rusty cast iron pan, we don't recommend it for that reason. Rust is just that. It's just iron oxide. It's not a new chemical or anything like that so it, it's no it's really no more poisonous than uh regular iron but uh it's not really something you uh want to get into your food i would say so <laughs> and uh yeah dr m we've got stuff at the local food pantry that is way over the best and sell by dates which is frozen so there is a way to do that yeah uh yeah sell by dates that's another thing as well is that they're meant really to protect the uh supermarket to more more than the consumer and again this is not a case again of evil corporation just sticking it to uh, innocent consumers here it is more for liability reasons than anything else and i'm i'm really saying this just to, you know just to try to be fair to everyone because you know i mean supermarkets they're businesses and they're run by people like you and me as well i mean maybe there might be a jerk in the bunch but you can say that about any business i mean most of the people who just run these things are people like you and me and there are they are very well are instances where people are looking for any excuse to sue and it's including things like bad food or food poisoning or moldy uh, bread, for instance. So that's one reason why they put the sell by date on the uh, on on just about every package. And furthermore, the sell by date is almost always quite a long time before the food is actually estimated to spoil. That's what that's. Yeah, there's a sell by date and a use by date. And so, date yeah. peak yes, peak freshness. So, uh, that's one reason why, uh, at uh, community uh, food banks and food pantries and the like, they're often uh, giving away food that is past the uh, sell by date, but it's still just fine. At worst, you may perhaps get, for instance, some <laughs> stale bread which is where bread pudding comes in. And then, and as I said, yeah, um, I was like that myself in that, as I mentioned, for most of my life, I didn't know about bread pudding. And I'm sad to think that back in my old life, when I was uh, living with someone, it's like we would go, we would, 
our part of our ritual was that we would get a fresh loaf of bread on Friday, maybe go through half of it, if that. And uh, by the time a week had passed, the other half of the bread was going stale and we would just throw it out for the birds, which is nice for the birds. Yes, but we could have used that to make bread pudding and we never did because we never knew about it. Instead, we just go and buy another fresh loaf and start the whole thing over again. So that's one reason why I was really thrilled with the idea of bread pudding. It's really helps to, uh, you know, just that to save food. So <laughs> Mark Steeler, I have, I have some in my collection that's inflated in price 200 to 300%. I bought all of mine in the bargain basement, poor man's collections. <clears throat> um, okay. Well, uh, I'm guessing you may be talking about cast iron and I would not surprise, that would not surprise me at all. So, um, and I can see right off, this is not going to be the traditional Southern bread pudding. Well, no, actually, I suppose it isn't. This is just a pretty standard bread pudding, though, um, in that all I did, as you saw, was I mixed together some eggs, sugar, and milk, along with a little bit of salt and a little bit of a vanilla extract. And it's yeah, really... Yeah, that's a good point. We are here in Massachusetts. So this is more like a New England recipe or even like a British recipe that uh, came here to New England and has been uh, well known in these parts. Yet it does not seem to be that well known in other areas of the country or so it seems. Yeah, yeah. I know it's this is not the same as Southern bread pudding, as you can see. And as you can see, it's uh, well, Southern, I would guess, probably has a lot less sugar. I'm. Yeah, yeah, it has pecans in it. So, <laughs> no, I, well, I don't know. Well, there is sweet tea, yeah, but on the other hand, southern cornbread has to be savory, and they accuse our northern cornbread of being too sweet. So, <laughs> when it comes to making cobblers, I mess, I mess up. Um, I mess up sometimes with measurements of sugar, but it always turns out great. Same concept. Yeah. As I said, this is one of those recipes where you're almost guaranteed to succeed. What you just have to do, as Jamie demonstrated, is that the bread has to be good and soaking uh, before it goes into the oven. And once you do that, then it is uh, pretty much uh, good to go. We're also going to make a topping to go, a sweet topping to go on to this as, as well. So, uh, we could do that. Yeah. So, yeah. So. Um, okay. Well, we could we could try doing that. I've never made bread pudding. Well, then. Uh, well, I do hope this inspires you to give it a try. So. Yeah. Yeah. Joy of cooking has a good recipe for bread pudding. Yes. Choose a recipe that suits you. Um, in that, I mean, this is my recipe and I'd be very flattered if people give it a try. Yes, but you do not have to try, but you do not have to use my recipe. Find one that appeals to you. I mean, that's really the, that's really the main thing here. My first recipe, my first bread pudding I ever made is my recipe was, I called my sister and she said, I use six eggs and some milk and some cinnamon. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. Yeah, so she said, mainly the thing you need to know is a six eggs. You know, mm -hmm. For anything nine by nine above is six eggs. Yes. <laughs> Southern does not have to be savory. I've had some really good sweet cornbread. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. and oh, and hello, Papa Dan, as well. Papa Dan. So, yeah, it's always nice, to, always nice to see you here. So, and crafts. 40 others. Oh, crafts for others. I've always loved bread pudding. I know quite a few people who don't like it. What? Well, maybe it might just be because it's something new. A lot of people have trouble getting used to uh, trying new things, unfortunately. That is one thing I have been doing my best, I hope, to encourage people to do. Try something new and see whether you like it. This one, as you can see, is so easy and so cheap that I am hoping that at least a few people do give it a try. <laughs> and cornbread is sweet. Okay, and having said all that, well, let's take it. You went right over that comment. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. But having said all that, well, let's uh, take another look at some cast iron, shall we? Because as I've mentioned before, 
Ugh. I did bring out another pan as well, and I'm still debating whether we may be able to uh, do more bread pudding in this or not. And that, of course, again, is a uh, right here. This is likely a European-made uh, cast iron. Uh, well, they call it a bunt pan, but it's really just a cake pan. There's. I'm sorry. I'm, it, you know, that's actually pretty tempting now that you say that. All right, so, give me just a second to do this, uh, okay, yeah, Jamie is actually thinking of going and getting some more bread at the store. That'll only take a few minutes. Even and... more, sir. There's a store, a store like two buildings down. Right. My wife just mentioned it, Eric Slider, if I'm pronouncing it right. Bread pudding sounds weird, but uh, here to watch and learn. Well, yeah, I, I mean. Yeah, exactly. Give it a try, and I do think you'll like it because it is a sweet dessert. So, in fact, a lot. Of, sometimes I make it for breakfast too. So, do you like French toast? <laughs> do you French like? Slider? Good point. Do you like French toast? What you're essentially doing is eating a bowl of French toast. Yeah. So that can't be bad. <laughs> and uh, Dr. M, I'm sure I speak for everyone when I say I'm glad we're. Ha oh well, okay. <laughs> well, thank you anyway. Uh, yeah, share the hobby. So. Um, yeah, maybe, uh, yeah, maybe I'll buy one if I stumble, um, if I stumble over at the thrift stores and flea markets and Elizabeth Shaw, I'm making bread pudding tomorrow and we'll eat it for breakfast and I will eat Indian pudding for breakfast as well. Hot with ice cream on it. Yeah. Putting ice cream on it. I don't see any problem with that. So yeah. French toast is great. Well, yeah. Okay. I will, I will, uh, reinforce that or restate it anyway. I'm not making it up. It's like, it's as though you're eating a bowl of French toast. Think about the, instead of thinking about the ingredients, you're taking bread, and instead of dipping it in the in the egg to soak up the egg, you're taking the bread and you're ripping it into pieces and you're putting the egg in with it to bake it. So, yes, exactly. So, so same same uh, yeah same ingredients. Mm -hmm. same, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And the sauce makes the bread pudding all the better. In this case, I used cinnamon bread, but you can really use just about any kind of bread. Uh, as I said, I was thinking of using these tortillas, although Jamie is insisting no. It won't, so it won't, it won't absorb anything. <laughs> it won't absorb anything. Well, there is that. No ice cream on bread pudding. I like it hot with heavy cream poured on it. It's like real old New England. But when you put the ice cream on it, the ice cream melts. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's like an almond. Mm hmm. And the buttercream sauce that you make kind of is like melted ice cream almost. Yeah. Like <laughs> Delicioso. All right, I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah, Jamie is heading for the store. You got the card? I'm sorry? The debit, the debit card? Oh, yo. Oh. Um, well. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's good. This? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I just don't, I, don't, I can't get my card right now because it's in, in the card. I'll give you a couple of bucks just to be safe. Okay. All right. Now that we've done that. Okay. All right. Okay. So the most recent castings have the helper handles on them. Yes. Um, it sounds like I think you're probably talking about uh, Lodge uh, cast iron because, yeah, they did, in fact, release a new version of the um, Sportsman Grill yesterday. And I did notice that the uh, Sportsman Grill has the standard, the new one, that is, that has the standard Lodge helper handles, just like all of, just like, uh, all of their new pans have, the same size and everything. So, uh Rachel Stratman, bread pudding? Yes, indeed. That's not plain fair. Are you also making hard sauce to go with it? Well, I'm certainly making a sauce. I could very well make a hard sauce because, yeah, uh, I actually saw a video just this afternoon as well, Jamaican bread pudding, and and they, and it still uses the same ingredients except to that one. They add a lot of booze, and boy, do they add a lot of booze. So that's gonna that would be a bread pudding that would really knock you off your feet. <laughs> you can certainly make a hard sauce to go with this if you'd like. So, do have a few pieces left of that. Um, but as I was saying, though, um, yes, uh, yeah, that is the other thing that Lodge has released a new uh, Sportsman Grill. Um, it's it's you can find it on their website now with a price tag of about hundred eighty dollars. Hopefully, the price will go down if and when they resell it to uh, or. Sense, uh, go to other dealers like Bass Pro Shops or the like. Um, it's interesting in that it n no longer has the three legs. Instead, it sits on a flatbed when it looks like you're supposed to load the coals into that flatbed. 
Uh, but I guess we'll have to see what happens when uh, other people try it out. Peg Tooth says, ironically, French toast in French is pan doré, and French fries are pomme, fr uh, pomme frites, or just frites. Uh, generally, collectors hate modifications to pieces, and it can ruin the value of really cool and rare historical pieces. Yeah, if, uh, if you could be talking about modifying a vintage cast iron pan, or you could talk about what Lodge has done with the new uh, Sportsman Grill. Um, it's only been out for one day, so we'll have to see what kind of uh, impact it has. I mean, people could very well like it, for instance, and uh, then it may... Uh, that would either way, uh, while it would increase sales of the new sportsman grill, it would also make the older sportsman grill more of a collector's item. <laughs> so, uh, I'd say that sounds like a win win situation either way. And Dr. M, notwithstanding, you'd have to consider how much you would be thinning it in that spot and how oh, heat distribution. Oh, I get it. I, I apologize, I missed the conversation. It sounds like you're, pro you, uh, I'm guessing somebody's talking about maybe using a sander or grinder to unwarp a cast iron pan, or that's what it sounds like. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. Um, the idea being that if you, you if you use a sander and smooth out the warped bottom of a cast iron pan, that it, um, you would, as they noted, number one, there would be the possibility that the pan could actually crack in that in that area. So, I mean, especially older cast iron is more fragile than a lot of people think. Not to mention that you would still have a divot in the center of the pan as well on the cooking side. On the cooking side, and furthermore, the area that had been sanded it would be obviously be seen as having been sanded and very easy to identify as such. And so, as he pointed out, um, that would uh, likely ruin any uh, collector value for the pan. And it's also questionable as uh, about what kind of a user it would be for that reason. So uh, if you have a spinner, and I have a few pans that are spinners, in fact, and I still use them um, nonetheless. So <laughs> uh, once at one time, I had a friend who had an interesting, uh, one of those newer um, Wagner's original 1891 pieces, you know, the ones that they made in the 1990s, just before Wagner went out of business. Curious thing, it had the most extreme warping I had ever seen. It literally looked like the pan, the bottom of the pan literally looked like it had, uh, like a drop, like a raindrop or something come around down on the bottom. That's how extreme the warping was. It was a flat pan with a little um uh, yeah again it's like a raindrop uh in the on the bottom so <laughs> um i once i actually asked him if i could buy that pan from him because i would have loved to have shown it off but he had already uh already discarded it unfortunately so all you have is my word for it <laughs> um <clears throat> buckshot mac i used a warp pan on a gas range and it works just fine yes indeed as long as you can get some even heating all around the pan it should work just fine you know what else would work fine as it would also work as a good baking pan like making bread pudding for instance so uh for that reason it is um yeah i would say still use it meanwhile sin did it please explain why some cast iron is brown while most others are black it does seem like some newly seasoned cast iron does have something more of a brown or bronze color uh to it doesn't it some people think there might actually be some oxidation there and that and that has not yeah that the seasoning did not entirely uh stop um i might disagree with that because i know with these brown pans, and in fact, let me let's see. Here's one right here, by the way. Stargazer. Well, the stargazer for one, but here as well is a large, a large Dutch uh, five quart Dutch oven that has more of that uh, color, as opposed to the darker color of this uh, vintage uh, bunt pan here. <laughs> Uh, I'm not so sure that it's oxidation. Um, I have seen it with a number of pans that I have uh, seasoned myself. Um, yeah, um, look on my channel. There's one from a few years ago that I titled specifically "Seasoning Lodge Cast Iron." That's where I that's where I had actually obtained a number of brand new pieces from the Lodge factory, and I seasoned them all up, and they all did seem to have that bronze color to them. 
However, uh, after only only a little bit of use, it definitely did take on more of that black color to it. Some people have uh, claimed that this is an effect of new modern cast iron and that vintage cast iron doesn't do that, and that is not true. I have seasoned vintage pieces and posted photos of them that also had that bronze color to them. If you uh, finish seasoning a piece of, of uh, cast iron and it ends up with that bronze color, I would say go ahead and, and use it. Again, only a few uses and you will find it turning black. So, And uh, Dr. M, I think it was an eerie no less that was oblong. Someone must have uh, glowed it and stretched it on one side. <laughs> Peg Tooth, my dad was the oddball neighbor who owned a cast iron charcoal fired small adjustable hibachi. <laughs> Uh, Rachel Stratman, I only have one spinner, but I use it in the oven or on the grill outside where a slight warp doesn't matter. Yes, exactly. If you have the pan, use it. About the only thing I can think of that would really stop anyone from using a cast iron pan would be if it cracks or is otherwise genuinely damaged. Other than that, go ahead and use it. I warped my cast iron wok myself and I still use it. Uh, Mark Steeler, I I think I have the answer. The uh, what does it say? The company has a difference in the alloys they you they uh, mix when they melt down and cast. Then there may be a, there may be some truth to that. That might be possible. So, um, but nonetheless, that's it's still uh, just fine uh, for uh, you know fine for cooking. And I would not pass up a piece in the slight in for practically any kind of cast iron pan just because it has more of a brown color than a black color and so i would certainly uh encourage doing so granny if you hear a loud noise coming from a southern direction in two weeks pay no attention it will be just me reacting to the injections oh yeah yeah well, yeah that's right about your eyes i know papa dan well Best I can say is uh, best of luck, and you know we're all counting on you. Just like in the movie Airplane, I just like to say good luck. We're all counting on you. Mark Steeler, I thought those two sounds like a casting flaw, major casting flaw. <laughs> I saw a lot of those hibachis back in the seventies. Yeah, I know, I know those those. Um, it's interesting. Oh, roadside assistance guy didn't get any notification. Oh, my condolences for that. Uh, as somebody pointed out last week, you might uh, there is a bell as well on the channel that you can click on to be sure that you do get all notifications. So, um, yeah, it's interesting the word hibachi. I mean, as as I understand it, that's Japanese or at least Asian, and yet people really like using that word, even for uh, grills that really are not that really never were officially called hibachis, and that includes the sportsman grill. They, I mean, they always called it the uh, sportsman grill, and yet most people call it the lodge hibachi. I guess it's just uh, one of those names that uh, caught on and people use it to describe it, any kind of a uh, grill of that shape. Kind of like how this this pan here is uh, considered, is often called a bunt pan, even though it's not. Um, I'll only say briefly that the, yeah, the word bunt was actually trademarked by Nordic wear in the mid 20th century. And this likely dates more towards the early 20th century. So it was made before they, uh, coined the word bunt to describe the pan. So <laughs> ring the bell or the pan, Melissa Watson, better late than never. And, and well, nice to see you here too, as well. Oh, wow. We've got 146 people here and I'm, and I'm very flattered about that. Uh, thank you very much to everybody who has been uh, kind enough to show up as, as I've uh, said before. So, uh, Papa, Dan, uh, Papa, my dad gets the injections every other month. They put in some uh, numbing medication first. He doesn't seem to mind it too much. Yes, indeed. As I said, uh, good luck to that. So no bunt, then what's it called? Technically, this is really just called a cast iron cake pan. It is a cake mold, and that's exactly what it was designed to do for uh, baking cakes. It's only, of course, because of the popularity of the bunt pan that people just simply call these things bunt pans. And uh, there's really nothing wrong with doing that. So, Or as Dr. M says, fluted cake pan because of the uh, design. And yes, I will uh, agree there as well. So, And Jamie is back. Yeah. And okay. <laughs> 
He 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 messed something up. Okay. All right. Anyway, here we go. We've got some uh, good old bread. And as you can see, this is just plain bread. In this case, it's fresh bread, but it does not have to be fresh. So that means we can actually get ourselves another uh, bread pudding. And I don't see any reason why we couldn't start. Uh, let me, okay. The first thing I have to do, which I forgot to do last time, is grease the pan. So let's do that means I get to uh, use this melted butter again. How do you bring a bottle? I came to my monster coffee and I said, here, to the store, this one here. He goes to the store with the can, <laughs> to the store, gets me two different ones of the wrong thing. <laughs> How in earth? <laughs> oh, you, goodness, oh you had can. somebody go. You didn't go yourself. You well, because so. he was, if you, if you bring a tour, yeah, he asked me for a cigarette, so right. I could make money, you know? Yeah, well... <laughs> If you need you something can, done you right, can, do it yourself, it, I guess. You can, so. well, what's wrong with that? I yeah. it's, it's, it's working smarter, not harder. Yeah. Plus, I'm going to give him a cigarette either way. So now, you know, you teach a man to fish, right? Yes. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks to you now, we can actually get started with another bread pudding. And this one, if you want to break out the chocolate chips, you could certainly do so. We're going to have to. They're out right there. What? Oh, right there. Oh, right, they're all the, right there. Oh, they are. Oh, yeah. okay. Even better then. Mm -hmm. All I'm all I'm doing right now, as you can see, is just simply greasing the pan. You know, be good if it's the white bread. Well, Maybe mix in the pineapple with the white bread might be good. Yeah, you might even want to do that. So we can give yeah. it a try. I don't see why Let's not. Try that. Yeah, we're. Uh, well, I don't know. I kind of like my pudding, my yogurt. Mm. Okay. <laughs> all right then. You you can no. save that. I'm sorry. Let's do the bread pudding with the curd pineapple. Here. Okay. Nonetheless. Um, right here. Okay. Well, for starters, I'm going to have to. Oh, I guess we're going to have to put it in a bowl then and mix everything together. No, you put it in there. In here? Yeah, just make it like a layer on the middle. In the middle. Okay, we'll do that. You know, we put a half of it down and then, you know, it doesn't work really. Okay. But yeah, just put it on top and mix it in because you got right. to mix the bread in. Yeah. You actually you know what? You're right. You're right, Eric. Because you have to mix this, the the mixture in. Okay. So just do the white bread only. All right. Okay, you mix it in a bowl because you're not going to mix it correctly in the, okay. in the bun pan. So we'll put it in the bowl then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And there's no reason why we can't use the same bowl. It has a tiny bit of liquid, but there's nothing wrong with that. No, it's all right. Except for this. Here, it's not. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure you have a different one. Okay. So Is now. That, so do you think it's enough French fries or should I get a different can? Yeah, that'll be fine. Okay. All right. So that means we're going to uh, go with bread pudding number two here. Oh, and we should use almond milk for this one to show mm -hmm. this first. So you can use almond milk. Elizabeth Shaw, you mix the bread cubes, which should be dried out, but it's okay if it's fresh with the custard, and then you add it to the pan you're baking with. Yes, I have made this. I have made this with fresh bread before, and it does still work just fine. Oh yeah, you know what else? I've also made uh, with that's fresh, and it's a bread panettone. Remember how I, we've talked about panettone? That wonderful, wonderful. Um, I don't know what you call it, uh, European, I guess, uh, sweet bread. That is definitely not a fruitcake. And, yeah, you definitely uh, use that fresh, and yet you can still make yourself a wonderful bread pudding with it. So, yes, it can be dried out. It can be stale. And, in fact, we recommend trying it with stale bread, in fact, uh, because, again, that will help you use some uh, use up some stale bread but it's not absolutely necessary. Pretty much bread is bread, and um, it'll all uh, absorb the uh, liquid anyway, so <clears throat> pardon me. But, uh, yeah, we've already said our piece about getting uh, loaves of day-old bread or stale bread, and, again, okay. so which... In my experience, yes. so what it ends up if you use dry bread versus bread that's moist? Is it just ends up with the texture is a little bit different. So when you end up with a moist bread and you're using it, it kind of was like a more custardy. You know what I mean? Like it ends up a little bit more softer. Like it doesn't. Oh, I see. It doesn't harden up as much as you would with the dry bread. It's got you know? more like a pudding. In exactly. Fact. Yeah. So it ends up a little bit more, I say, custardy in the bread pudding. Maybe it's the opposite way around. Anyways, whichever one's more firm is the dry bread and less firm. Yeah, there you go. Yep. Mm. And sometimes people like to put a steam bath in with their bread pudding. And that changes the texture as well. If you do a steam bath in the oven, 
All right. So uh, that that pretty much answers that. Yes, you can use fresh bread with uh, bread pudding. You can also use uh, dry bread or stale bread, which I still uh, recommend doing. Um, and in fact, as I said, I really wish I had known about this and we would have done it as a weekly or maybe a weekend ritual rather than uh, throwing out half a loaf of uh, dry bread every Saturday. We could have uh, made bread pudding with it. Well, we could have done that too, but yeah, we were not very smart in those days. I like to think, yeah, I like to think things have changed a little bit, so. All right, I think this should be enough. Well, 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 yes, it is. Things change, so. Okay, there we go. So we've got ourselves a whole bunch of... Just that, a whole bunch of uh, bread, which means now, and oh, great, now that I've used this bowl, uh, I'm going to have to um, get out another bowl because this was the one I used to mix my eggs. Oops. <laughs> All right. Well, then, let me very quickly. Just put the dry bread, put the dry bread in the bun pan. Okay. And then when you go to do the, just dump the bread from in the bun pan into the bowl. All right. We'll work it out. Yeah. Okay. What she said, she said, put the uh, dry bread into the bunt pan. So that is uh, what we will do. Yeah, that we're not it. yeah. And yeah, there's definitely less volume in this pan. So this is going to be, this is definitely uh, just the right amount. You can see how it said just, just about to overflow here. All right. I have used some whole wheat, but never pumpernickel or rye. And yeah, you certainly could too. Or Texas toast bread. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. So let's try to get a view both both this and that. That should do. I'll just move this over a little bit. Which means now I get to uh, crack a few more eggs. All right. One. Yeah, that's the other thing, though. This thing uses a lot of eggs. Uh, I have seen some recipes that only use half the amount of eggs but it seems to work better with more eggs. Two. Three. Four. Five. And by the way, I should point out as well that I am not that I'm not cracking my egg on the side of the bowl. I'm always cracking my egg on the uh, countertop here. Uh, that is a uh, that's a tip I learned again from our friend Alton Brown, as he pointed out. You know, the thing about uh, cracking the egg here on the side of the bowl means that it will force tiny pieces of shell into the egg, and that makes it a lot harder to get it out. So that's why he recommends always uh, doing it in the bowl um, on the uh, countertop, which means from here we will go again with a uh, cup and a half of sugar, as she recommends. That's one, two. In fact, I think I'm going to modify the recipe on my website, especially for that reason. And three. All right, and now we just uh, cream it all together. And this inspired me to make skillet cookies tonight. Hey, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, we've used number 14 skillets as pizza pans on live stream. And, that, and definitely, that's, um, that's another story in itself there about having a, a number 14 skillet. I've said before that I do recommend that everybody at some point or another uh, acquire yourself a nice big cast iron pan like a number 14 or a number 12 or even a number 10 like we're making that bread pudding in tonight you will get a lot of uh, use out of that i can guarantee that and you'll also be known in your neighborhood as a person who has that big cast iron pan and you may end up using it as well to make things for your neighbors friends family and so forth and that's not a bad reputation to have 
But yeah, the number 14 size cast iron pan, the one that's 15 inches across. We're just past the holidays, but uh, you can still keep using it. I mean, after all, we have other holidays coming up, like Valentine's Day and Easter, for instance. Um, you can make huge, gigantic pizza-sized cookies. You can make pizzas in them. Uh, that is also a really great roasting pan. Or you can even take it outside and use it as not just as a 15-inch griddle, but a griddle with a rim so that there's less likely that stuff will spill when you uh, cook uh, outdoors in, in that kind of a pan. And that sure didn't take long to uh, get this uh, mixture together. Then to this, well, as she says, I think we'll just dump in the rest of... No, actually, that's right. She wants almond milk in this one. So, okay, we'll use almond milk instead of uh, regular milk, which just demonstrates that, yes, you can use almond milk in bread pudding. So, if for whatever reason you're lactose intolerant or anything else, uh, there's no reason why you cannot use... Uh, some other kind of liquid in your bread pudding. Here's two cups. And since there's a little less volume to this, two cups may very well be enough. Or at least I certainly hope so. And we will just mix all this together. And the other thing she wanted me to do is to uh, mix in some chocolate chips. So how can we do this? Okay, yeah, I think I, I think I know what we'll do, and this will help to make sure that everything is uh, even anyway. Let's add in our liquid right now. And since there's a lot less surface space, this seems to be a lot easier to add the liquid too. I'm liking this a lot. So I might very well recommend using like a uh, baking pan or a bunt pan of this kind. Because this is very easily uh, soaking all of this bread. There we go. That did not take long at all, in fact. Now to this. She wants chocolate chips, she will get chocolate chips. Let's throw in. Oh, the first bread pudding may be getting done. I think I'm starting to smell it. Let's throw in some chocolate chips. Then let's actually put this back into here. I think I'm going to need a spatula, in fact. Uh, or maybe the spoon will do. All right, now let's put this back in here. There we go. And I think this was her suggestion, and it doesn't seem like a bad one. It looks like this thing soaked the bread pretty nicely. So let's simply mix all this together. Get these chocolate chips spread throughout the bread. And once this goes into the oven, I think we'll be able to take the other one out. So I'd say we're doing pretty nicely here. Here we go. So what we have here is going to be a chocolate chip bread pudding. So, yeah, if you want to make this with your kids, go ahead and do so. Hopefully, this will encourage you to do that, in fact. Now, from here, let's just simply put this back in carefully, very carefully. Move this over a little bit. Oops, always do that with these with these uh, bunt pans. Little piece always seems to escape down the center. Nonetheless, there we are. And with that, just like a cake, I'd say this one is ready to uh, go into the oven. 
I'd use or try eggnog. I don't see why not. How do you grease a uh, corn uh, stick pan on your BSR slice eight? I will uh, come back to that in just a moment. I will answer that question in just a moment. Meanwhile, let's get back again and put this into the oven. And then I think it'll be time to take the other one out. Oh man, I think it's about time for it to come out. Yes, indeed. <laughs> but in fact, I think we're gonna have to do two things at once here. Let me move this out of the way. Let me move this out of the way. Ugh. Come on, you bugger. There we go. And let's very quickly do this two steps in one. Here's one. Oh, man, look at this. Oh, man. Ugh. And then this other one will go into the oven. Right now, in fact. Ugh, there we go. Having said that, check this out, folks. I'd say uh, we have a nice uh, bread pudding right here. So uh, things are uh, looking pretty good, all right. And by the way, if you'll notice, this thing's actually nice and jiggly. There we are. So yeah, this is definitely a nice pudding. Didn't even have a chance to uh, do the topping. I had better do that very quickly, in fact. That means better. Um, well, let me see. Since I have this, maybe I'll be able to uh, do the topping in this. Let's see if we can't get a view of both by moving over here. This is pretty good. All right. Now... Okay, it's time to, okay, we're done with this granulated sugar, and we're going to have to start adding a whole bunch of powdered sugar. This is wet already, I know, but we'll make it work. I'm talking like maybe about at least a cup or more. That should be enough. This powdered sugar. And then from here, let's just start adding our milk. Maybe about that much for starters. That sure didn't take long. Okay, do this as quickly as we can. There we go, and in fact, may have used a little bit too much milk, which means we'll just have to throw in more powdered sugar. There we go. Then let's get this done as quickly as we can. And yeah, I think this is a much better consistency now. There we go. There we go. This is good indeed. Very quickly threw a glaze together in this. To this, we add just a touch of salt. Hello. Hello. A little bit of uh, vanilla extract. And with that, I do believe we are ready to put our glaze on top of this bread pudding. Oh yeah, this, this I think is uh, just about right. So here we go, folks. Here comes some food porn. Almost literally. Because, <laughs> let me... Get a better view of this cast iron pan here. Here we go. 
And with that, here comes the glaze. Check this out. Oh, it's just, it's just. I just made a sugar glaze. I, that's all right. We can do a trelacé glaze in the next one. But there we go. So yeah, a lot of sugar. Yes, indeed, it is a lot of sugar. There's no, there's no denying that. So. <laughs> They will stick like the double toothpicks. Just brush a thick layer of melted butter on. You don't have to, <laughs> have to thank me. <laughs> I don't deny that there. So, Okay, let me do one more thing and quickly snap a photo or two of this to uh, post on the Cast Iron Cooking Group, unless I get kicked out for spamming the group. <laughs> That's a story I'll have to tell you in a few minutes. Um, there we go. So far, so good. And now, as promised, as this cools off, let me uh, check a, uh, a couple of comments because Papa Dan had asked a uh, question a few m minutes ago. If your area has pumpkin eggnog, you can't do any better with bread pudding to use than that. Oh, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, I don't go for the uh, nonstick coating aluminum. Making cast iron into nonstick seems an, like an oxymoron. You know, they actually tried making nonstick cast iron in a few instances, none other than BSNR. They actually did produce a small number of Teflon coated cast iron pans. Yes, Bur yes Birmingham Stove and Range did that. It did not sell very well, though, so there were only a very few of those uh, to be found. So, <laughs> That's mine is Nordic Ware, a mini pan. Okay, I missed the boat on getting an affordable one. The 2008 Lodge are mostly gone, at least in the U.S., and vintage is expensive. I found a vintage aluminum one that's been using. Well, that actually sounds... Uh, Pretty tempting in itself, I'll have to say that. I almost got a bunt pan at Costco, Nordic Wear, but non-stick coated aluminum. And I guess that's how this conversation on non-stick started. So <laughs> I do use eggnog for French toast. Ooh, yeah, that that is uh, pretty tempting in itself. Eggnog yeah, eggnog, eggnog uh, pudding. Don't go for the uh, non-stick. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, here we are. Uh, Papa Dan, I got my first corn stick bread, a uh, corn stick pan, and was planning on brushing it, but they said that they spray Pam in there. It's personal preference, I guess. Okay, what I do recommend, Papa Dan, and anybody else as well, if you are making corn cornbread in a corn stick pan, just like a cast iron skillet, preheat the pan first. Get it good and hot. I like to preheat my uh, corn stick pan or my skillet at about 400 degrees, and uh, then after it's smoking hot like that, then you add your grease to the uh, pan, whether it's, I like using corn oil myself. Some people, of course, use bacon grease. Again, this is for cornbread. Some people even use butter. Um, basically, once it's good and hot like that, then you uh, coat the uh, pan, and uh, then after that, you add your cornbread batter. At which point then it'll be hot enough that will help give a nonstick to it so that when it then comes out of the oven in only about 20 minutes or so, uh, it you will it will not stick to the pan. You can trust me on that. So. Cornbread. Yes. That is the best cornbread recipe you'll ever in your life ever have. So you, if you use uh, the Jiffy Mix, so you take a Jiffy Mix, you take a thing of cream corn, okay, and you add... That's like three quarters of the can of cream corn to the Jiffy Mix, and that's it. And hmm. you bake it, and it becomes so, so good. It's almost like as a, a cake-like mixture. I'm telling you, 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 you can't go wrong with trying it. It's so, so, so yeah. good. So it's a Jiffy Mix with three quarters of a can of uh, cream, yeah. sweet, uh, sweet uh, three quarters of a can of cream corn. How about, you know, I've just had an idea. How about in two weeks after Valentine's Day, we'll have a cornbread episode here. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that way we can make a couple of types of uh, cornbread. and bring, Oh, yeah, we could do that. And then we can bring out a couple of cornbread pans as well. So that'll be in about two weeks. We will do a cornbread episode. How about that? So, 
And I like a little almond extract in the glaze, says Terry Sinchef, which is not a bad idea either. So been canning for over 40 years, says Granny Graham. I do not doubt it one bit. <laughs> um, you can also make bread pudding with cut up cinnamon rolls or pumpkin spice rolls or whatever. Yes. What? I'm sorry? Oh, yeah. Honey buns as well. Jamie also makes bread pudding, of all things, with uh, little Debbie honey buns. <laughs> And uh, from here, I Why have to, yeah, I have to voice 100% of the time. I have to voice type 100% of the time, and I don't see the uh, same mistakes. I, I meant to say Dan. <laughs> we have something else in common. You and I can eat a lot of food that comes out of cans. <laughs> So anyway, that, uh, though, is my advice on using a uh, corn stick pan. And as I said, I think we are going to commit in two weeks to having a cornbread uh, cast iron Wednesday, and we will see what happens there. That'll be a good excuse to uh, pull off uh, some uh, cast iron. My word, you know, we actually managed to make to an hour and 20 minutes here. And we still have 139 people watching, and I'm having trouble believing that myself. I can only say thank you once again, everybody. So, Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, Melissa Watson, we make a hamburger casserole with corn and Mexican spices and top it with corn, cornbread and bake. Oh, all of that sounds pretty darn good. So yay, cornbread. Uh, thanks for temperature tip. I wouldn't have preheated my pan that hot. Uh, yeah, I, I have a couple of cornbread videos already on my channel. Go ahead and look for it. Uh, I even have one that if you look for this title, you'll see it. And it is called How to Use a Cast Iron Cornbread Pan. And I hope that helps. So we are 139 culinary fanatics. <laughs> 142. I can't believe we're actually gaining people this at this late in the uh, live. I can only thank everybody so much for that. But as you can see, this is what we have here. We have our bread pudding. And really, it doesn't even have to sit at this point. We can go ahead and serve it. Every, every, it I mean, this is all ready, uh, ready and willing to go. And believe me, I am looking forward to chowing down on this. It has a very soft consistency. We're going to put it into bowls and you eat it in with a spoon because it is, in fact, pudding. This is the European version and especially the British version of pudding as opposed to the gelatin stuff that we have here in the U.S., which is just fine. That's what we know as pudding here in the U.S., but in England especially, this is pudding. And so that's why they have their um, all kinds of uh, puddings there in uh, in New Eng in England. That is both both sweet and savory. So uh, we've uh, made it this far here, and I appreciate uh, everybody's uh, everybody's time here. As I said, this was made in a Birmingham stove and range, twelve inch, actually twelve and a half inch. Uh, cast iron, number 10 cast iron skillet that dates from the 1970s. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I have uh, done a couple of videos about the history of Birmingham Stove and Range. We could always go into that again, um, <coughs> maybe in about three weeks or so. And yeah, actually being able to look forward to something like that is definitely not a bad idea either. So I think we will aim for that hopefully by the end of uh, by the end of uh, February and the beginning of March. And then once we get into March, you know what else we're going to have to get into? We're going to have to get into corned beef and cabbage and St. Patrick's Day. <clears throat> and that is definitely something I'm looking forward to. And my my. Good grief. My throat's getting dry here. So, uh, Rachel Stratman, cornbread, are you trying to start a riot over here? Yes, I am. <laughs> It'll make for an interesting live. That's certainly for sure. So, yeah, uh, yeah, we're definitely looking forward to uh, trying out this uh, this bread pudding, and especially when the second one comes out. So, <laughs> show is always too short. Too short? We're, we're at it. We're at almost an hour and a half already. So, but yes, I do have cleanup, unfortunately. And furthermore, I have work tomorrow, so I really can't stay too much later, I'm afraid. When this show first started, I think I was running it at about... <clears throat> <coughs> yeah, I'm, my throat is dry. When this show first started about a year and a half, I think I was running at about maybe 35 minutes and then 40 minutes. And then it went to an hour, then an hour and 10 minutes. 
And now here we are uh, regularly running close to an hour and a half. Uh, on New Year's Eve, in fact, we, we almost made two hours. So anything in moderation will not kill us. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, or as some people like to say, I drink in moderation. Moderation is an area basically five foot around me wherever I am. So 140 now, 149 actually. So I'm very, I'm very flattered, especially since we, yes. Okay. So to be inconsistent, you have to consistently be inconsistent, <laughs> therefore making you consistent. <laughs> that's a, that's a brain teaser. All but right. Is, so to be inconsistent, to be inconsistent, mm -hmm. you'd be, you'd be consistently <clears throat> be inconsistent. And and thank you very much, Stephanie S. Leck, if I'm pronouncing it right, or Sleck, for mentioning this channel. I very much appreciate it. I mean, besides the fact that, well, of course, you know, I, it certainly helps with my uh, YouTube views, and that's always good. But more importantly, that's really what makes this channel a lot of fun. Yes, and yes. And be sure to uh, hit like and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. And uh, oh, yeah. because we are going to keep on going here. Well, not tonight, but I mean, we always do have uh, more of these shows coming up because this topic is uh, pretty much endless. I mean, we spend all this time just simply making bread pudding. <clears throat> and there's so much more to do. Next week, in fact, of course, we is the week before valentine's day and so we are going to have to uh pull out a little bit of uh valentine valentine valentine's day <laughs> baking and yeah, i'm that dark chocolate cake oh yeah oh, we, we can oh, oh yeah dark chocolate cake for valentine's day which is also going to be a birthday cake in fact i've got no less than four friends who have birthdays this month my really? brother uh mama bear <clears throat> um your son, yep. and oh yeah, and that's right. And I can't forget my friend Anthony in New York as yep. well. So it's I've got June is for me. June's like my birthday, my son's, my my sister's birthday, my dad's birthday. That's how soon June is for us. Yeah. So yeah. Elizabeth Shaw, I never knew there was a live uh, Wednesday show. What time do they start? Well, I try to aim to start these at um, eight p.m. Eastern Standard Time. As you can see, this one has been running about an hour and a half now. So here it's almost nine thirty Eastern Time. Next week, I may actually have to postpone it until Thursday because I just remembered I am actually on the work pager next uh, Wednesday. And so that may have to uh, cause this to be postponed until next Thursday. Yeah, I think we may end up doing that. So next week, it's actually going to be Thursday. I will put a notice of that on my channel. But right now, though, I think it's about time to head on because, well, we've got some bread pudding to eat. And I can only appreciate once again. Okay. All right. Okay, so yeah, last thing is you want it in a bowl. Basically, you just want some. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, okay. Let's get this in a bowl. Everything I do is subtitles. Yeah, well, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's really what this whole channel is about, about having fun. So let's get this into a bowl, and then I think we'll be able to uh, call it a night here. Um, here's where it all gets nice and messy because, because again, this is a pudding. And so as a result, you, you serve it with a spoon and this thing is still dripping hot. Oh yeah. You can see this thing is steaming hot in fact. So yeah, somebody mentioned putting ice cream on this and there's certainly nothing wrong with that. But from here, you just tell about your buttercream, just there we go. And that's how easy it is. Just a little bit you more. Your glaze, though, they know mm. about it. And we, yeah, we could all we could have also made a buttercream glaze. And in fact, Jamie wanted to do a buttercream glaze, but I kind of threw one together at the last moment, unfortunately. But nonetheless, there we are. This is a bowl of really steaming hot bread pudding. And having done that. Yeah, the plating is the money shot. <laughs> Tell me about it. As you can see, though, it's still uh, pretty solid, by the way, if you notice. It's not really running. So that's why scooping it out with a spoon is probably the best way to serve it. But having said that, I do believe it's about time for us to go and eat this. Right, put syrup on it. 
Oh, yeah, tomorrow we can put syrup on this. And I can only thank again everybody, though, for showing up. I mean, the time goes by so fast, it seems like. I know I do nothing but talk here, but <clears throat> really it's because everybody is here and watching and commenting especially. That is really what makes this uh, so much fun. And as I and I know I say this every week, but I mean it every week. Again, you folks are what make this uh, these live videos so much fun, and I'm so glad um, for every, and so thankful to everybody for showing up here. Uh, I'm doing this as a hobby. I'm not really asking for money. I my videos are monetized, yes, but you know it's like I'm not begging for donations. I'm not putting in any kind of subscription on this channel because it's really meant in fun more than anything else. And that's what we will uh, hopefully uh, continue to be doing. We'll be having fun for uh, quite a long time to go yet. Um, if, anybody ever, if anybody ever does do anything like that, it all goes back to the Oh, yeah. Yeah, the sound of the pager does raise my blood pressure. There's no question <laughs> yeah. about that. So, <laughs> yes. And as Elizabeth oh, Shaw says... Fly on the wall here. <laughs> and as Elizabeth Shaw says, have a wonderful week, everybody. Be well and be safe. Yeah, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, these are dangerous times. Please be safe, everybody. Please be careful. And having said that, I can only thank everybody once again for showing up. So keep calm, everybody, and cook in cast iron. And have a good evening. Thank you once again. And see you all next Wednesday.